at Amazing Comic Con 2019, I had the incredible opportunity to sit down with Jerry Conway and talk to him about his incredible career, which started at the age of 19 on one of the biggest titles of the time, Amazing Spider-Man, in which he killed Gwen Stacy. So if you don't know, Jerry Conway is one of the most influential writers in comic books uh, there ever was. And he has a huge list of characters that he created over time. It's massive. And I'll be running a ticker down here showing you all of those characters. Particularly, we will be talking about Punisher. But, I mean, he, he created Man-Thing. He created uh, Vixen. He created Vibe. He created Count Vertigo. He created uh, Tombstone, Jason Todd, uh, Black Spider, Commander Steel. I mean, the list goes on and on. But here's what he has to say about his own work. Oh, just to just the fact that uh, what I did uh, many years ago apparently still has an impact and resonance for people who probably were not even alive when I did it. <laughs> so that's that's impressive to me. I think that uh, every generation. I mean, the Punisher is a Rorschach test, uh, a cultural and creative Rorschach test for the time in which your the, the the character is being uh, created and written. Uh, so just like Batman, it's a very fundamentally simple concept, so it allows for a lot of uh, variation and, uh, you know, input uh, and uh, reading into the character depending upon what you want to see in the character. The, the version that I'm most familiar with is the Netflix version uh, the, with John Barenthal as uh, the Punisher. And I think they did a very good job of uh, bringing it up to date and uh, addressing the uh, emotional issues that a character like that would be uh, having to deal with, which is always something you want to see in a story. I mean, I think the best stories are the ones that, that capture an emotional truth. So this uh, version of it, I think, does capture an emotional truth. The character was created to be a, initially to be a one-shot or maybe a two-shot uh, henchman for a, a character that we were trying to build up, uh, the Jackal. Uh, but in the course of designing and developing the, the character, naming the character, realized we had some more potential in that character. So it wasn't a question of having a conversation and coming up with uh, a character from the outside in. It was more that this character grew as he was written and developed. He's, almost, he's, well, he, he's sort of the anti, I mean, he's sort of the, the dark side of Batman. Uh, you know, he's, he's what happens when you, uh, when you don't put limits on your vigilante posture. All of our superheroes are, to one degree or another, vigilantes, and uh, all of them are acting in ways that uh, are outside the bounds of the law. But what he does is he takes it kind of to the logical conclusion, which is that if you believe that the law and uh, the process of law will not provide you with the justice that you seek, what's to stop you from going all the way? You know, if, you're, if your goal is uh, retribution, and uh, revenge, then nothing short of death is going to accomplish that. So it's a logical consequence, you know? I mean, right. the idea that Batman pulls his punch, basically, um, is what makes him a hero. You know, that the, the, the idea that he is driven to take revenge for his parents' death, uh, that could lead him to anything. You know, it could lead him in any direction that you want to go. But the fact that he pulls his punch, he, he will never pull a gun, uh, despite what Zack Snyder says. Uh, he will never willingly kill someone. That is what makes him a hero. And with the Punisher, he's an anti-hero. He's not a hero because he doesn't pull his punch. Right. You know, The one thing he won't do is kill an innocent. Uh, but beyond that, all bets are off. Yeah, I mean, Spider-Man webs up his catches and leaves them for the cops. Right. Uh, you know, he's, he's basically acting, uh, I mean, in one sense, as like a private investigator, you could say, uh, an adjunct to the, to the normal uh, course, of, course of law. He doesn't take it upon himself 
to, uh, ed, uh, to, to be judge and jury and executioner, which is what the Punisher does. Uh, he simply, and the same with Batman. Batman gathers the evidence, finds the bad guy, delivers him to the courts, and then accepts the, the judgment of society. Uh, if, for example, the, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a hypothetical, but if, if the, the uh, Batman gathered all the evidence that the Joker did a crime and puts the Joker before the courts of law and the Joker is set free, Batman would not take him, catch him, and put him in a, a hole somewhere. Uh, he would watch him, <laughs> and he would wait for the next time that he did something that uh, crossed the line, and then he'd do it all over again. You can be justifiably pissed off, uh, but there's a line when you cross that line, it doesn't matter how justified your, your, your uh, emotional state is, the actions are not justified. That's kind of my feeling about Frank Castle, about the Punisher, is that uh, his uh, motivations are justifiable, but his actions are not. Well, I think a, a, a memorable vil villain would be someone uh, who either has a unique uh, uh, gimmick or power. I mean, obviously, that's that's always in play with a su with a supervillain, but even more so, has a, a compelling story that uh, gives that character some weight, uh, so that when they go up against the hero, uh, it's a uh, conflict that matters. Uh, whether uh, it's a, uh, uh, an emotional weight that they're bringing to it, a historical weight, uh, a threat because of the circumstances of the context, uh, all of that matters to, to making a character of a terrific villain. Uh, and there was something which uh, writers have to remember that no villain sees himself as a villain. Every villain is the hero of his own story. So if you can write a character who is not just a, uh, a caricature of a bad guy, but is someone who generally thinks, genuinely thinks he's on a heroic uh, storyline, uh, that makes for an interesting character, a great villain. Well, yeah, teams, but Tombstone's also, also a character who uh, feels justified in, in his behavior. Uh, because he was maltreated and uh, uh, an outsider. Um, and I'm not saying he's justified, but he thinks he's justified. And that's what, that's what makes for an interesting character, you know, especially if he has, a, 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 as in the stories that I did, uh, has a legitimate uh, complaint against a, another sympathetic character where you're kind of torn between... Uh, is he justified because, yeah, he really was screwed over in that circumstance, but his manner of dealing with that issue takes him outside the bounds of moral behavior. So that all of that makes just for fun, interesting stories. A character I've always been fond of and, and uh, at various times have thought was particularly well written uh, is Green Lantern. Uh, I, I love the idea of I mean, I, I just love the, the wish fulfillment aspect of if I only had this ring, I could do whatever I willed. Uh, that's a, a, a perfect superhero trope. Which, which, which uh, version? The Hal Jordan? Or well, Hal just Hal? all of them. All of them together. The, the notion of the, the ring that gives you the power uh, as a superhero trope is perfect. You know, it's a perfect trope. But... As a, additionally, I really like the world building that went into the character and his history in the, uh, uh, the Silver Age and throughout you know, the development uh, over the last 60 years. Uh, there have been different variations on the character, different interpretations of the character that have been more successful than others, but uh, I'll always be a Hal Jordan fan and I'll always like the idea of uh, you know this galaxy-wide uh, law enforcement sy uh, system, uh, even if it is, uh, uh, as Denny O'Neill said, a crypto-fascist uh, <laughs> situation. I think you know there's a certain 
there's we been can, creating storylines even exploring yeah, that concept. You like can. How, how right is their cause? Yeah, I mean, you can, but I, I think it's, I think a part of the fantasy element is that they are righteous, you know? I mean, it, it, we start off with the idea of power rings, and if you can believe in a power ring, you can believe in a righteous cause. So I'm, I'm willing to go that way, but I'm also fascinated when they go other ways. So, you know, I'm, I'm a reader who enjoys playing every note, you know, and seeing every note played, or hearing every note played. It's awesome to hear that you enjoy the same media that you create. Yeah, I absolutely do. It's the hallmark of a great creator who makes what they want to see. I'm a fan. I'm a fan.